Rome, a city that's known for its history, impressive architecture and small penises, its food and its ancient ruins. It's the capital of Italy and home to the most recognisable stadium in the entire world, the Colosseum. And my journey ends here today guys, because funnily enough, this stadium just so happens to be a thousand miles away from Cardiff, my country's capital and home to another stadium. Which is where my journey begins today. I'm in Cardiff. Behind me is the Principality Stadium, the National Stadium of Wales. About a thousand miles southeast is the Coliseum in Rome. So without flying, let's get there. Capital to capital, stadium to stadium, this is a thousand miles for a thousand subscribers. Well, let's do it, guys. Alright, packed up, so I just filmed the intro. Let's go. The good news is the train station is not that far. It's just around the corner from the stadium. So that's the plan. Train Cardiff to London. When I get to London, I've got a few hours before I board my Eurostar to Paris then. And I haven't booked any further from there. The weather is shit. Classic Welsh weather. Look where I am, guys. This is where I am. I'm trying to decide who that train looks like. Do you know what I mean? Like, it reminds me of someone, but I don't know who. I was gonna say Robocop, but I don't know. Definitely a recognizable face right there, and I never forget a face normally. I did make a cheeky stop to get myself probably the best part about British cuisine, a pasty. But not just any pasty, I got myself a festive bake from Greg's. These bad boys are amazing. I've actually got three. I bought one for a homeless guy. I walked past him and he asked me for a quid and I didn't have any cash, so I bought him a pasty. Then when I walked back, he was gone, so I was like, well, I've got three now then. Even better. All right, I want to say real quick that the Coliseum is actually 991 miles from the Principality Stadium, not exactly a thousand miles, which really pissed me off. But a 991 subspecial just didn't have the same ring to it, so I figured I'd just round it up. I mean, out of all the ideas I had for a 1000 subspecial, this was by far the best. Train travel in the UK is just ridiculous, man. If you're not from the UK and you're going to come here to travel, just be warned that traveling by train is the most expensive way to get around. It's like the most expensive train travel in Europe. The UK and Norway is sort of always battling for that title, but at the moment I think we got it. The most expensive train travel in Europe is insane. The good thing about it though, and pay attention to this, because this might be possibly the best bit of advice that I will give you on this channel, is these paper tickets that they give you, uh, the cardboard tickets actually, sometimes they give you paper ones, these cardboard tickets. You can in fact turn them into <laughs> If you do want to save money on train travel and you're eligible, get yourself a rail card for a third off. It's still expensive as fuck, but it helps. Or optionally, just don't travel by rail and take a coach. There's going to be a lot of pickpockets in places like Paris and Rome as well, especially when you're using the metro or like at the Eiffel Tower and stuff. So what I normally do, I will normally take multiple cards with me when I travel. I'm a main bank card, my travel card, maybe a credit card. I've also got a spare travel card that isn't activated yet. It's just a dormant one, so if I lose my main one, I can activate that one and use it. So what I do is I'll literally just keep the card I use in my wallet. That's my credit card I don't need. Um, that's my spare card I don't need. And I use that one as my travel card. Why? mate it's all about the wise don't go using revolut they suck these two i will stash in my bag somewhere like literally hide it within my main backpack so that if someone was rummaging through your bag in a hostel or something they're not going to find it so easy hide it in there so if you get your wallet stolen when you're exploring you've got these two backup cards in your backpack then as a reserve
Just got to London. It's fucking boiling hot in this train. Like I'm so hot. It's ridiculous. I'm I'm almost melting. I'm surprised the train warden didn't walk down. And I'm just a puddle there on the floor. And let's go to my favourite place in the world, which is the London Underground. I am being completely sarcastic. I hate the Underground. The only good thing about it is it's convenient. But well, I'm in London Paddington. I'm gonna do a little bit of sightseeing. That train took ages. It was delayed by an hour. So my train to Paris is in about two hours' time. So I don't have as much time as I hoped I'd have. But um, we're going to do some sightseeing very briefly. Then let's get to Paris. Never been to Paris before, so I'm excited. One good thing about the underground guys is that you can just scan on with your bank card. You don't need to buy a ticket. There's a lot to see in London and I didn't have very long. So I thought I'd head to Westminster Bridge and kill two birds with one stone. I made it! Look at that! Big Ben that is! So guys as you can see behind me we got Big Ben and we got uh, I think that's the Houses of Parliament. Yeah. I'm not really sure yet. Yeah, apparently it is. This is the Houses of Parliament and um, Westminster Abbey is there somewhere as well. But the best part is, guys, if you are going to view Big Ben, you go to Westminster Bridge where I'm stood right now because you've got this view in one end and then you turn around and you got that view the other end. How cool is that? There's loads to see in London, guys, actually. So um, if you want to see a more in depth, video on London let me know actually because I can make one for you but to be honest with you London is probably my least favorite city in the whole world so don't really want to do it but if you want to see it I will do it guys because you mean the world to me but for now that's all you're seeing of London is the London Eye and the Big Ben Take this time real quick to give a shout out to my members those of you that joined the i'm so craigy membership program guys absolute legends honestly i am flattered that you guys did that for me so we're my first membership leighton man second was mark shaw theo thomas holly wilson fleur jones and harriet wilcox guys thank you all so much for being a member all right harry i didn't even know you subscribed man that's awesome thanks so much brilliant Look, I'm just gonna be honest now. I thought Gaza was his mate or something who had recently passed away. So I thought I'd head over there to see what the crack was. Hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> oh, it's a red light. It's like the first one. Who for Gaza? Come on! Who for Gaza? Beep, beep. Oh, yeah, we got these motorbikes. Hey. Oh, they're cops as well. We'll get the cops from there. Ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, mate, come on, give us a hoop. Give us a hoop for Gaza. Beep beep. <laughs> come on. Come on, add a little one. Before saying bye to the dude, I did a little bit of shameless promotion. I had an absolute blast at Westminster, so before heading to St Pancreas, I decided to grab some food. Just went through passport control and security. I'm at St Pancras waiting to get my Eurostar to Paris. Oh, I'm just gonna find a seat and just chill. I got like an hour. Next stop, Paris, guys. <laughs> get in.
made it to Paris, guys. Just getting off the train now. There it is. This is the Eurostar. So I've never actually rode the Eurostar before. That was a first for me, and it was on my bucket list. So I'm happy about that. That's another tick off the list. I've got a ridiculously long bucket list. Maybe I'll share it with you guys one day. But if money was no option, or if traveling was free, I wouldn't have enough time in my life to finish my bucket list. The Aria and Metro, to my knowledge, are the same thing. They both make up the underground system here in Paris. I arrived in Paris around 7pm, and because I was only in Paris for one night, I knew this was my only opportunity to see the Eiffel Tower in the dark. So I headed straight there. That's a double-decker underground train. Like, I've seen double-decker trains, but we're on the underground right now. The Metro. And there's loads of seats. London, take some notes. Look, seats. Anyway guys, this, uh, this stop I'm at now is called Champ de Mars. This is the Eiffel Tower stop guys, easy to remember. Wow, that's incredible, it's a lot smaller than what I thought. It's quite surreal seeing it for real life. I'm 32, I've never seen the Eiffel Tower before. I've never been to Paris before. So this is another tick off my list. So today is a fucking win, because that's two bucket list ticks in one day. When you finally see it for yourself, it's like you want to scroll up. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to scroll up and I'm so used to seeing it on a screen. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's tiny. I am so shocked how small it is. Look at that, imagine just coming out of this bar here after having a few pints. Some guys casually playing football over there and then you look this way and you're like, what the fuck am I looking at? That's insane. That is the most pointless security check I've ever been through. I had to empty my pockets and then I've got my bag with everything I've got in it for this whole trip. Didn't even have to put it through a scanner or anything. I just walked through the metal detector with it on. The metal detector beeped and, and now I'm here. But what's the point in that? I could have bombs, drugs, firearms, prostitutes, all sorts in here. The size of this bag. He didn't even check. What a silly security check that was. Sorry guys, I keep getting distracted. I'm trying to chat to you. But the Eiffel Tower is right there. I'm walking underneath the Eiffel Tower. Look what I can see. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? I'm couch surfing tonight as well. I forgot to mention that. I haven't got a hostel. I'm trying to save as much money as I can on this trip because I'm spending so much money on trains. So I thought, right, well, I've got someone called John. I hope I'm saying his name right. He's hosting me tonight. He seems like a pretty cool guy, but he's at a meeting apparently till 10 o'clock tonight. So I don't know what to do with myself. I'm thinking I just might stand here with this amazing background behind me. It's just so surreal to be just walking down the street in Paris with that in the background. Man, what an incredible view. Like I could just stand here all night and stare at that. No, I'm not talking about the Eiffel Tower, I'm talking about that. Amazing. Just remember that the tower sparkles for five minutes every hour on the hour. But if you want to see the rare spectacle of it sparkling with the main lights off, this happens only once a day for five minutes at 1am, right before the lights shut off for the night. It's about half ten now at night. I uh, just got off the stop where my couch surfing host is, where he lives. So I'm going to go meet him. And I uh, got him a six pack as a thank you for letting me stay for the night. But I'm going to go meet him, get my head down. I'm exhausted actually. I've done a lot of travelling today, so I'm pretty tired. And then back on it tomorrow, full on. Morning guys, it is day two in Paris. Uh, I'm at my couch surfer's house still. I'm having croissants for breakfast. Lovely guy, he's just got me croissants for breakfast. Here he is. His name is Jean. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm in the middle of Paris, so let's do some exploring, guys. All right, see you later, Jean. Legend. Travel. 
early in the morning. I'm in Paris. Let's do some sightseeing. My train to Zurich is at 4.20 later this afternoon. So I've got one day to go and see Paris as much as I can. Let's do it. With the help of some local knowledge, I planned the most efficient route to see everything I wanted to see. After walking past the Palais Garnier, I headed to Montmartre. At this place, you can kill three birds with one stone. As well as walking up Montmartre, you can also see the Basilisca of the Sacred Heart of Paris, which is found right at the top. And right opposite that, you get an amazing view of Paris too. If you're visiting in the winter time though, like I was, I'd recommend going up in the evening. Otherwise, you'll get that low winter sun blasting straight into your eyeballs ruining the view. For Montmartre, get off at Anvers or Abesses. Got myself a uh, beer, Cronenberg. We're in France after all. So in classic, I'm so craggy fashion, we don't do sightseeing unless we're buzzed. Because sightseeing is boring, am I right? But you've got to do it. I've said that so many times on this channel. It's something that has to be done. So get it out of the way, but use it as a day sesh as you're doing it. That's my top travel tip for you right there. So I thought I'd talk about couch surfing to you guys. I just realised I was talking about it last night, which was probably about two minutes ago for you. Some of you guys might not even know what it is. So for those of you who don't know, couch surfing is basically just a website where you can sleep on people's couches or sofas or whatever you call it around the world for free. It's a website made presumably by backpackers for backpackers. You can be a host and host your house or you can just be like me and uh, apply to the host to stay at their houses. The whole purpose of it is to make travelling cheaper and uh, you meet new people and make new friends along the way as well. As Jean put it yesterday when he was younger he used to travel a lot and now he uses couch surfing as a way to travel from his own home. I was like I like that. I put that in my video so I just did. But yeah it's not always a sofa some people only have like a small one bedroom apartment in New York City and might have you sleep on the floor. Some people have spare rooms and uh, they'll let you sleep in the spare room. You actually get a full bed and private room and it's absolutely free and it's awesome. It's an awesome concept. It's how a lot of travellers travel the world on the cheap. It's called couchsurfing.com guys. You should go and check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's a good experience. Man, I just got to the top of Montmartre. You want to see what I can see right now. That is incredible. From Anvers, I took Line 2 to Charles de Gaulle Etoile to see the Arc de Triomphe. Oh my god, there's a stop called Rome. I may as well just get off there and call this video a day, huh? That's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to my 1000 subscriber special, and I'll see you again very soon. Like, subscribe, good night. From here I took Line 6 to Trocadero. If you take Exit 1 from this station and head to Palais de Chaliot, this viewpoint will give you an incredible view of the Eiffel Tower. Next I took Line 6 and Line 1 to Palais Royal, Musée de Louvre. Made this sun. Literally this sun is ruining all my shots all day. This is my top tip for you. If you're going to come to Paris, don't sightsee Paris on a sunny day. They've aligned it so that the sun just ruins everything. Oh my god, nobody told me that the Louvre had a little baby. Look at the little baby Louvre. Look how cute he is, the little baby. They're breeding. They're breeding the Louvre.
After exploring the gardens at the Louvre and the fun fair, I decided to go and get myself a proper French lunch. Because as is custom with every new place I go, I get myself a local beer and some local food. For this, I headed to a restaurant called Bullion Chartier Grands Boulevards. Here you can eat snails for 7 euros 50. This restaurant is pretty weird. It's not somewhere you go for a relaxing dinner. It's an in and out job and very noisy inside. But a great place to eat snails on the cheap. This place is very popular, so be prepared prepared to queue to get inside, but because of their fast turnover rate, the queue goes down fast. Actually pretty good. Only queued up to get in that restaurant to eat the snails, so I decided to eat a lot cheaper and yeah, what well, everyone should get when you go to Paris, a French baguette, a proper baguette. Or if you go to Paris, it's about getting a French baguette. It's like going to Turkey and not getting a kebab. It's like going to Thailand and not fucking a lady. Where I'm eating this baguette is pretty impressive. I'm here looking out for the hunchback. It's Notre Dame, baby. <laughs> Remember those fires like five years ago? Still under construction. It's really weird. It's got like, a seat in like a cinema. Just to sit here and look at Notre Dame. <laughs> this is so weird. I've got to leave in like 10 minutes for the train station and I'll be getting my train to Zurich. This is my last stop in uh, Paris. Not a bad stop, it's very nice. Very nice to look at. Pigeons enjoying Notre Dame too. What do you think of it, mate? Is it everything you expected? reached a thousand subscribers and no that's not enough so be like the cool kids and hit that subscribe button people one become one of us, us. One of us. <laughs>
I just don't know which way to go. So I'm feeling this way for some reason. We'll just try it out. Sometimes Google Maps works with no data, doesn't it? Like it still tracks you. Nah, not this time. Um, all right, I'll check in with you guys in a bit, see what I get up to, I guess. I might be having a cold night out on the streets. The airport's not far, so I'm gonna go to the airport. That's my backup plan. It's very eerie, isn't it? It's only nine o'clock at night. It feels like one in the morning. Right, I think that's the building. I think I'm in the right place. Let's have a look. Fuck. It doesn't have numbers, it has names. And I only know his first name. I know his name's Benjamin. It gives you first initial and last name. And there's two on here with the first initial B. And that's even good on the basis that I'm at the right building. <laughs> So we've got 50-50 guess on what doorbell to ring there. Let's try the other side of the building now. Right, there's no doors around the other side, but there's these doors I missed. <sighs> and of course there's a B here as well, so there's, and this block, it is the right block. There's three apartments with the initial, first initial B for Benjamin. I don't think it's got his last name. Oh, it does, it has his last name. Ah, found it, bang it. Okay, I just rang it. It's this one, <laughs> it was this one. Guys, I found the place literally just after ringing the doorbell, he answered straight away. There he is, man. This is the one. How you hey. doing, buddy? <laughs> Legend. Great. This is uh, Benjamin. Yeah. Yeah, and he's let me sleep tonight around yeah. the place. Yeah. So I also have a YouTube channel if you want to watch it out. It's in Swiss German if you want to listen to Swiss German, but it has English subtitles that you also understand. It's called The Swiss Hiker. <laughs> there we go. He's plugging his channel. Yeah. My Legend. <laughs> <laughs> sub to his channel yeah and watch at least my one if you like it also sub <laughs> legend yeah, yeah you hear that guys subscribe to my channel and subscribe to this guy's channel <sighs> morning people it's fucking early it's like seven it's like seven o'clock in the morning just got up i've been up for like 10 minutes five minutes even just get my bag ready there we go we're going to explore zurich day three baby day three let's get this done today i go to italy <laughs> The good thing about Zurich is it's a small place, so everything on this video is within walking distance and all crammed close together, so no need to use public transport. There is a small tram network though, if you want to use it. My first stop was the Swiss National Museum, because it is right outside of Central Station. Then I walked a loop around the city, eventually coming back to Central Station. Most of these places are no more than a five minute walk apart from each other. This first place I'm going now is a place called Lindenhof. Uh, it's meant to be a little hill with a nice view of Zurich. Zurich. Hopefully today we won't have to spend any money besides, I say this all the time guys, you gotta try the local food and the local beer. That's the only money I'm hoping to spend today. No money on travel, no money on anything else. Not even double big tasties, as tempting as it is. Lindenhof is awesome guys, nice little view. It takes literally about three minutes to walk up here. It's not high and they got a pool as well. But I didn't bring my swimming shorts. I'm so grateful that Zurich is very compressed, very compact. Like this entire route I'm doing is probably like four kilometers in total because I don't have a lot of time here. I'm away to Italy later on. It's cool that I've actually got the time to go and see all this stuff because it's so close together and I don't have to spend all day on the underground. There isn't an underground. All these places, including where I am right now, is in the Old Town. Old Town Zurich is split by a river that goes down the middle, so Old Town is on either side of the river, and it's pretty much central Zurich. Everything's in Old Town, pretty much. It's such a cool place. I mean, look at that. Look at that street. It's just cool, isn't it? It's just a nice looking street. It's all cobbled and stuff. And here's my next stop, it's this church. If you come to Zurich, you have to explore Old Town. Not only because most of the attractions here are here and it consumes most of the central city, but also because it's just awesome. It's just lovely to walk around, especially this early in the morning.
when you get to Zurich Lake, which is absolutely massive, there are loads of places to view it from. But I recommend viewing it from Renton Vise Park, which is exactly across the water from the Opera House. There are some nice benches there where you can just chill and have your lunch or a beer. Man, Zurich is mint, ain't it? Like, there's not a lot to do here, but it is fucking lush. Definitely worth a visit, guys. But it is the most expensive city in the world right now. Gotta be frugal. Actually, this beer, it cost me about six quid. But as you know, every new place I go, I gotta try the local beer and the local food. Also, I just found out I've had two new people join my memberships, guys, since I started recording this video. And that's Jean from Paris. That's the guy who hosted me on couch surfing. I didn't ask him to become a member, guys. Jean, thank you so much, man. That's awesome. And thanks again for hosting me, dude. You're a great host. And then I had Warren Bowett. <laughs> Sounded Bowett. Used to work with him, yeah, he's joined as well. So thanks for joining, guys. Welcome to the team. So this beer's for you. It just tastes like a generic beer. It just tastes like a Carling or, or a Foster. It doesn't have like a unique Swiss taste that you'd expect. But oh wow. I'm gonna chill and enjoy this beer, guys. I've had the local beer, now it's time to try the local food. For that, I went to the raclette factory. Raclette is basically just potatoes with melted cheese on top, and it's delicious. If you do want to try it, I highly recommend the raclette factory. The place was vibing. After my food, I walked up one of the world's most expensive streets back to Central Station to get my train through the Alps to Italy. This part of the journey is what I was most looking forward to. This is where I get the train from Zurich to Tirano in Italy through the Swiss Alps. This train route is one of the most scenic and awe-inspiring rail journeys in the entire world and it runs along rail lines that have been declared World Heritage Sites. It's called the Benina Express. The official Benina Express actually runs from Chur to Toronto, so first you'll need to get there from Zurich. It has panoramic coaches with enlarged windows and it's direct with no changes, taking about 4 hours. You will need to pay extra to reserve a seat on top of the price of your train ticket for the Benina, making this a pretty expensive rail journey, coming in at about 75 quid, best case scenario, in the low season and if booked ahead of time, but really expect to pay well over 100 quid for this four hour train journey but don't worry because i'm going to show you two ways you can ride this route for cheaper and this is more like the train what i was expecting now on the second train i literally have to go from that train to this train The first way is to just take the local trains from Zurich. You won't have the panoramic carriage and there will be multiple changes, but they're super quick and easy. From that train to this one. And the stations have some breathtaking views too. The local trains run across the exact same tracks with all the exact same views. It's just not the official Benina Express, meaning you don't need to pay the extra for seat reservation, meaning this way will cost you about 45 quid.
just got to, uh, I don't know how to say it actually, some random town in the middle of the Alps. And my next town is Torano, I think, in Italy. Last stop in the Alps. Fucking hell, this train journey is insane. This is my last change now. And I don't know what I'm gonna do tonight. I haven't, I haven't figured anything out. I'm hoping to get to Rome, but I'll arrive in Italy at around about six o'clock. I'm gonna be up like, on the northern border of Italy and I gotta get down to Rome, so maybe not. Maybe I get to Milan and then I'll figure it out. I don't care anyway. The second and the cheapest way is to do the same, however instead of booking it from Zurich, book it from a stop called Singen, which is in Germany, right near the Swiss border. Booking it from here means you can book it on the German Rail website, making this a whole load cheaper. Rail travel in Germany is much cheaper than Switzerland. You won't need to travel to Singen to get the train, because Zurich is one of the stops on that route. Just board the train as it passes through Zurich. This method has been tried and tested and is completely legitimate. If you book ahead of time you can be lucky enough to get yourself a ticket for as low as 25 quid that's two thirds off the price of the Bernina you're welcome everybody Man, what a long ass train journey that was. Six hours that was. So I'm in Italy and now I need to figure out what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> Literally the first thing I see when coming out of the train station, a pizzeria. Guys, just leave pizza to the Americans, all right? You stick to your pasta. Well, Toronto seems nice. We got a little love heart, a pizzeria that sells beer, as I know. And uh, that's pretty much as far as my Toronto experience goes because I've discovered that this is the train station and I want to go to Milan. It's six o'clock at night, it seems a lot later, actually. But I need to get to Rome. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen tonight, but let's get to Milan first, one step at a time. The next train to Milan is in 30 minutes, so I've got a couple of beers, i got half an hour to kill, so I'm going to chill, it's fucking freezing, mine. It doesn't look it, it don't look cold, but it is cold. <laughs> I haven't backpacked like this since my trip through, through Central America, and I know this is only a short trip. My, my Central America trip was three months. This is so far been three days, so <laughs> nothing in comparison, but I haven't done a trip like this where I'm constantly on the move every single day since that trip and it feels good I'm ex I'm tired because I'm just not conditioned to it anymore but it feels fucking good I love it and I just want to make enough money from YouTube so I can do this for a living I don't want YouTube to make me rich I want YouTube to just make me enough money so I can do this forever <laughs> so uh, just help me grow guys if you're watching this please subscribe help me achieve that goal right I literally just got to Milan now I need to find Hopefully a coach, uh, hopefully I'm going to get an overnight coach to uh, Rome or otherwise, I don't know, maybe I'll sleep at the station, I haven't got any plans. We'll figure it out, we always do. I've just been told by the ticket man that maybe I can get a coach to Rome from a place called Lampiano. I'm going to head there now, I'm at the metro station and if I don't get a coach then I'm just going to sleep at the coach station I uh, don't have any other plans <laughs> but I'm so close, I'm so close to finishing this Rome is like right around the corner if I don't get there tonight, I'll get there tomorrow and that's that guys, cheers I made it as far as Milan and I've run out of money. I just bought a bus ticket for 10 past 11 from Milan to Rome, an overnight bus. It was going to be perfect. I would have had a night's sleep tonight on the bus. Get there in the morning is perfect. But I'm at the bus stop now and the bus is from a different stop man. and there's no chance I can get there. It's in 20 minutes time and I looked online it takes about 40 minutes on the metro to get there and that was the last of my money. So unfortunately guys, as much as I would have loved to have finished this video it's not gonna happen man. I think tomorrow I'm gonna try and hitchhike down. I've got a few more days off work, but I'm pretty much fucked. Oh well. Let's call it 900 miles for a thousand subscribers. So I managed to 
managed to get another ticket and it's for I'm leaving in 40 minutes time it's now about 20 to midnight actually it's kind of a better ticket because this one's direct the other one had to change but the annoying thing is it cost me another 60 quid the bus 69 quid that cost me as well from a different part of Milan missed that as much as I'm gutted that I wasted 69 quid I'm just happy that I'm gonna get to Rome and finish this this special what a fucking adventure this has been Excuse me, mate. That's me off the bus. That was uh, overnight bus I took there, so actually I saved money on accommodation, which is pretty cool, but that bus was fucking expensive, man. I don't know if it's just because it was last minute or whether they're always expensive, but for Italy, I thought Italy was going to be cheap. My first impression is not so much, but it was an overnight bus, so the way I'm looking at it is I saved money on accommodation, so that's one bonus from it. It's a good way to travel. It's a good tip for you there, guys. If you are overlanding it, train and bus and all that, always try and take the night ones because not only do you not waste a day of travel, you also save money on accommodation because I had nowhere to stay last night so that was good I, I had a shit sleep but uh, in any case I'm in Rome so let's get this let's get this finished and uh, let's get home I'm not gonna do really much of a video on Rome guys I'll do that in the future I think the first thing I need to do before going to this Colosseum is find a McDonald's because a McDonald's is a great way to freshen up brush your teeth wash your face do all that morning business find a McDonald's find the Metro go to the Colosseum and then as always I got myself an Italian beer some Italian food and uh, then I'm gonna go to the airport. I would explore Rome more guys, but I just really don't have enough money I am so broke man working for i is not the way forward as mentioned earlier in the video Be careful of pickpockets when you're taking the underground in Rome So if the train is busy take your bag off and put it between your legs to keep an eye on it You should be doing that anyway really having your bag on when the train is packed is a real dick move I don't know if something was going on that day, but Rome was heaving. The streets were packed. I wandered around for a little bit, then decided to stop at Pizza and Mozzarella before I headed to the Colosseum. It's a tiny hole in the wall pizzeria, and the pizza was absolutely banging. I highly recommend going there. The owner and the chef speaks very good English and is a super friendly dude as well. I chatted to him for like half an hour, and the place is located walking distance from the Colosseum too. When he sells the pizza, he sells it by weight and not by slice, which I thought was really interesting. By way. Depends how large you want to your place. Oh, you can choose the size, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Whoa, look at that. Legend. Man, look at that. Got myself an Italian beer. It's not local to Rome, but it's Italian. Anchovy. Mm. Mm, salty, good. Before cheese. Oh yeah, that's a cam of course, banging. This one is potato and rosemary, no cheese. This type of pizza is quite common, so they do say when in Rome, so I thought I'd give it a go. And of course, it's delicious. Not bad too. Straight out of the tube station is the Colosseum. How sick is that? So I'm right there. And I've made it. <laughs> I'm at the Colosseum. That's another tick off my list. That's another seven wonder off my list as well. So this is a big one, guys. I'm really happy about that. Right now, I'm just trying to find a place where I can film my intro scene to this video. And that's it. We've done it, guys. We, we achieved the goal. I got from the Principality Stadium in Cardiff to the Colosseum in Rome. A thousand miles for a thousand subscribers. Can't thank you all enough, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's not over yet, but I really hope you enjoyed it, guys. I feel very accomplished. And it's been a hell of an adventure. I haven't slept much. I'm tired, but it was an awesome trip, man. I'm so happy to have documented it for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Notice I changed my hoodie. Changed it for the intro scene. And plus, I've been wearing that other hoodie for like three days anyway, so it's about time I changed it. I met Kim Jong-un. I've seen him. I was starstruck. I'll show you some clips, actually. Oh my God, it's Kim Jong-un. 
Did you just see that? I'm starstruck, I don't know what to do. <laughs> it looks just like him, don't it? Bit of feedback on the Colosseum. Feedback to Italy, it's fucking tiny, mate. I imagined it to be so much bigger. They make it look so much bigger on Gladiator. I thought that about the Eiffel Tower as well. Maybe I'm just a giant, I don't know. But it's not as big as what I thought it was, but it's so awesome to look at it, knowing that like, it's so old. <laughs> it's so old. You're so old. Hey, I'm not ageist. It's cool, it's impressive. If you're still watching at this point, I thank you so much because I've put a lot of work into this video, so I really hope you've enjoyed it. It was a hell of an adventure. I ticked three things off my bucket list, visited two new countries and three new cities, and I did it all in just four days. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to show your appreciation. This is only the 1,000 subscriber special. Imagine what I have in store for the 10,000. To my subscribers, thank you all so much. You you guys are helping me realize my dream. I can't thank you enough for that. I appreciate all of you. Big up 1703 Ian who became a channel member as I was editing this video and shout out again to all my channel members. It's you guys who paid for my train to Rome airport at the end of this video with your kind donations to my channel. Absolute heroes. Thank you.